Uh, here comes Dr. Bismala, who's a microbiologist at the Cancer Institute. Dr. Lafranchi, of course, will take the merit and the fault for everything that goes right or wrong. However, uh, Dr. Bismala has been an epidemiologist for three years now. Well, here I come to speak to you about the classical antibiotic uh, therapy and about bacteria, antibacterial therapies. I'm going to speak to you a little bit about uh, the situation here at our institute, among things. When we sp we've been speaking about antibiotic therapy for a long time now, and in this slide we can see the um, uh, surgical site infections. We spoke about these already in the mid 19th century. Almost all patients who were subjected to surgery uh, had some sort of infection in about 100% of cases. Fortunately, in the course of time, things have improved a little bit. Cockpaster came along, the antibiotics were uh, discovered, and many things uh, were made for the improvement of uh, the, the infectious situation right up to our day and age, where we will see what has been going on. Most certainly, the patients who come to hospital are patients who are being treated better and better as time goes by. The techniques have been uh, improved and Sometimes, however, there is risk and a negative consequence. One of the risks is to acquire a uh, hospital-induced infection. This means that uh, they will have to stay in hospital for a longer period of time. We have analyzed here a number of surgical patients, patients who were submitted to surgery, and they were uh, compared to non-infected patients, Staphylococcus, Sorius is the um, bacterial that we're speaking about here. So here we have a comparison, both in terms of hospital stay. 23 more days in hospital is what the infected patient has to endure, compared to one who does not have infection. Of course, there's not only a longer hospital stay, but there are uh, extra costs that have to be borne by the facility. And uh, important, I mean, the most important thing is is uh, the survival, this is the survival curve after 90 days, non-infected uh, and infected uh, patients with Staphylococcus or methicillin sensitive or methicillin resistant. We'll see how the Staphylococcus aureus divides itself into these two great categories because they are uh, the uh, situations that lead to the more severe uh, infections. What are the risk factors for nosocomial infection? As a common infection is called so because it is uh, an infection acquired in hospital. The patient comes to the hospital uh, healthy from the point of view of infections and acquires the infection at the hospital itself. Sometimes these are elderly patients and are more exposed to risk. They have uh, severe illnesses. Sometimes they are institutional transfers. They are uh, discharged from here and they go to uh, home for the elderly, or they go to add patient structures. There is, however, the transfer of patients between one institution and another, and the germs and bacteria travel along with them. Most certainly, prolonged hospital stay is a risk factor, so is surgery and heavy exposure to antibiotics and antimicrobials, because they help us, but they can also be rather damaging if they are not used correctly. This is a cancer institute meaning that our patients are rather particular. They have a, an a extra risk factors. Their immunodeficient status is impaired. Uh, sometimes uh, then in, um, the neutropenic and so on, and their immune system doesn't work very well. They have been exposed to radio, chemo, corticosteroid therapies, maybe before a surgery or before having to having had to undergo other procedures. They often come to hospital because they come for chemotherapy, so they travel between the uh, facility and their home, and they also uh, pick up germs that there are in all hospitals or in other hospitals, in ours as well as in others. And we spoke about coccyxia this morning. They 
they uh, suffer from malnutrition, a weight loss as a consequence of the disease. And they use CVC, with a, which are venous catheters for the therapies, they, uh, which become colonized with germs and can be the source of infection. What is the situation in Italy? Uh, what is the size of the problem? This is a study carried out in 51 hospitals in Italy, and as you can see, about 6% of patients who are hospitalized have an infection. They are treated, but unfortunately, they also acquire an infection. What infections are acquired in the hospital? Pneumonia, uh, infections of the urinary tract, blood diseases of the surgical site, or other types of infections. This means that the patient can acquire and take home this kind of infection. In this study, you can see that almost half of the patients who have been investigated are undergoing antibiotic therapy. 